Hello everyone, uh, my name is Andrew Naylor and I um, love Raspberry Pi, I love Wi-Fi and uh, over the last year it's been a baptism of fire just diving in and trying to learn as much as I can about uh, Wi-Fi as well as Raspberry Pi. I, I was a little late to the game, I'm sure everyone here got a Raspberry Pi before I did. I got mine like nine months ago and I've been playing catch up. So. Uh, hopefully you guys can uh, learn from some of the things I've, I've done in the last year and um, uh, afterwards feel free to uh, come up and talk and I'd be happy to answer questions. So the important thing uh, about setting up uh, Wi-Fi with Raspberry Pi is the operating system because depending on what project you're going to be working on, um, different operating systems come with a lot of uh, pre-installed software. So for example, Raspbian uh, Linux is um, it's kind of the go-to for most hobbyists, especially if they're doing uh, uh, automation or any sort of systems control or temperature stuff. Um, because it has all of the, the packages and software like um, uh, uh, Perl and um, other scripting languages installed. Now, Kali Linux, on the other hand, has a lot of tools that are custom made for Wi-Fi. Uh, that includes um, uh, a monitor mode uh, software such as um, Aerodump, as well as um, some great products like Kismet, which not only uh, track the Wi-Fi packets, but they also categorize, sort them, and analyze them on the fly. And then it saves them to a PCAP file that you can later analyze in a, in a network analyzer or packet analyzer. Um, now, next I'm going to talk about hardware. Uh, Raspberry Pi has two options, Model A and Model B. Uh, Model B uh, uses more power than Model A, so if you're going to be using a uh, a mobile uh, setup, uh, the, the A might be a better option for you. It just has fewer ports. Um, so there's some power issues um, when you try to plug in a whole bunch of Wi-Fi uh, antennas as well as keyboards and other things like that. Um, the recommended input from when plugging it into a wall or battery is 1.2 amps. Um, and you can max out the USB. In other words, plugging in a Wi-Fi antenna into the USB port on a Raspberry Pi, maximum output is one amp. If you're going to go above one amp, you need to use a powered hub. Um, and for example, in my mobile setup, right up here, I have um, uh, my Raspberry Pi with a GPS, and then I also have the Wi-Fi antenna. And both of these combined use pretty close to one amp. So I can't plug in a keyboard or else the, the device won't load. So if, if you have any issues, just try unplugging things and that might solve some of your problems. Um, but understand the limitations uh, and uh, doing the calculations for what your devices are going to use will help you avoid um, issues later on in the project. Um, yeah, so you can calculate. Uh, the other thing is uh, the power cord. So the power cord between the battery and the Raspberry Pi, you can get those in as long as 25 feet but they won't work. <laughs> uh, it, the longer it is, the more uh, uh, power loss you have. Um, so use a shorter cable and you'll have fewer power issues. Um, now, depending on the project, you're gonna want a wall board or a battery. For my mobile stuff, I have a battery. It's easy to find the batteries. You just search on Amazon for a USB battery or cell phone battery. Um, and for the most part, they su supply the, the five volts and um, uh, let's say 800 milliamps or 1,000 milliamps. So I'm going to start talking about uh, the 10 different projects that I did. Um, so there's Wi-Fi Snooper. Uh, basically, you install um, a Kali Linux, and then you use uh, Kismet, which I talked about earlier, which uh, tracks the packets and then categorizes them. Um, this is great because you can see all of the access points that are near you, as well as the clients that are connecting to them. Um, the, controls, the control mechanism for Wi-Fi is not encrypted. So even if uh, you're using WPA2 or whatever, you will still be able to see the clients connect to the access point. Um, it also does historical analysis. So um, if you leave it on for 24 hours and someone connects you know, for just a minute and then disconnects, it'll see that in the log. Uh, and that's where the PCAP file comes in handy because you can actually go down and look at the individual packets um, and see what it is they were trying to do. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about Wi-Fi Honeypot. Uh, this, this was a lot of fun because it gives you an idea of how many people are willing to connect to an unknown access point that they've never seen before. And the number I've gotten so far is like 20 or 30, and that's about two a day, I guess. Um, 
I, I don't do anything malicious. I just like to see who's looking for access points. And I think that, that that's a very educational experience because some cell phones I've identified uh, will just connect automatically to certain um, uh, access point names. So uh, make sure your cell phone isn't one of those. And by setting this up at home, you can probably find that out. Uh, the software I use to do this is uh, Host APD, um, Nginx and DNS Mask. But what it does is Host APD allows the, um, uh, the Wi-Fi antenna to act as an access point, and uh, then the Nginx acts as a web server. DNS Mass says, "Hey, send everything to the web server." So it's it's not a uh, it's not a, too, too too complicated. Uh, the next project I like is uh, Snoop on the Snoopers. Um, is that my feedback, or is that someone else's? Feedback? Hopefully, it's someone else's. Um, uh, Snoop on the Snoopers. Uh, certain Wi-Fi clients and, and software will pretend to be a client and connecting to different access points. And when it does that, it sends out certain packets, depending on the software application. And those packets are like red flags for uh, Kismet and, and various software programs for uh, analyzing the packets. And then what you can do is you can set this up at your house, and you can set like an LED or a flashing light on top of it. As soon as it sees one of those packets, it's like, hey, look, someone near you is trying to do something malicious. You should be careful. And, you know, lock down your, your uh, access points, or you should lock down your access points anyway, but a lot of these tools led me to the same conclusion over and over again, which is uh, there's a lot of malicious stuff going on out there. Um, the, the great thing about Kismet is that you can add um, uh, additional packet types. So, for example, let's say you set up a home um, a lab for testing uh, various Wi-Fi uh, uh, projects, and you say, oh my gosh, this one is creating a, this specific packet when I do this malicious thing, or when my neighbor does this malicious thing. You can set up an alert for that packet, and you can say, text me anytime this specific device does this specific packet. So uh, Kismet's very customizable. Um, Wi-Fi repeater, I like to say spend $60 for a $30 device. Uh, you can find uh, repeaters online very cheap, but if you have extra hardware, it's fun to play with. Uh, the great thing is you can also layer things. So uh, you can set up a Wi-Fi repeater and um, honeypot, or Wi-Fi repeater and a monitoring node. And that's a good way to, um, to, to do multiple things with a single Raspberry Pi. Uh, mesh networking is, is really fun um, because if, if you have a lot of Raspberry Pis like I do, you can put one in every room and then set up a mesh network. And even if you pull one, they'll still be connected to all the others. Uh, there's a great software program called Air Mesh. Um, and uh, you can add LEDs for fun. So for example, add an LED anytime it receives a packet, and then you send something and all, all of them light up at once. It's kind of fun. Uh, Tor Proxy, uh, this is one I haven't done yet, but uh, all of my friends uh, recommend. It's a great way to browse the web anonymously, and it, and it automatically connects to the, uh, the Wi-Fi adapter and sets it up in access point mode. And then that way, you can kind of have anonymous internet wherever you go. And you just kind of plug in your Raspberry Pi and connect to your access point, and you know that wherever you go, it's going to be anonymous. Um, so I have squirrels. Anybody else here have squirrels? He you does, know, that guy. Um, so we, we, we planted some corn in our backyard. And I don't know why squirrels love corn so much, but they sure do. Uh, and they've been just destroying our plants. So I set up a, a Raspberry Pi webcam using the Raspberry Pi camera. And um, now I know that it was squirrels and not my neighbors that were eating our corn. Um, uh, covert listeners, this is uh, something I was sort of uh, alluding to before, which is uh, uh, setting up a monitoring node, but doing it uh, outside your house. And so um, I don't have any pictures because um, I don't have any pictures. But what you can do is you can you can hide it inside a cardboard box. You can hide it under a pile of leaves. You can you know put it anywhere and then like put it next to a train station and see how many access points go through that train station every day. I live right by the Caltrain station, and as soon as I started uh, doing all of this uh, Wi-Fi analysis. I noticed that you know during certain times the number of people would just explode. I was like, "What is there a bus going by with uh, you know Wi-Fi tourists?" But it turns out it was just Caltrain. Um, now, th this thing blew me away. Uh, there are spectrum analyzers for Wi-Fi, and they're generally expensive, like a thousand dollars. They used to be really cheap or free. They were built upon um, some of the uh, uh, Wi-Fi antennas that were more common, but. As they uh, made more money, they raised the price. So now it's hard to buy a spectrum analyzer. Um, that's where Ubertooth comes in, in, in handy. It's this great product uh, that was made for listening and manipulating uh, Bluetooth traffic. It's about $100 or $120. Uh, and what's great is that the, um, uh, the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi uh, spectrum overlaps. 
So um, you could do the this complete spectrum analysis on the uh, 802.11 uh, Wi-Fi space uh, using the UberTooth. Um, I like it because you can see the peaks of where the your neighbors are using it. So if you want to switch your channel to the least used channel, this is a good way to find it. Also, if you have a microwave in your house, um, you can watch this and then start the microwave and everything just explodes. It, it goes crazy. Um, and that, that's a really fun uh, tool. Um, and then there's remote sensors. This is the last project because it really is infinite, right? Anything you can connect to the Raspberry Pi, uh, whether it's temperature, whether it's humidity, um, any environmental sensors. Um, uh, this, uh, what I did here was um, I added uh, some uh, temperature uh, or thermometers to a board so that I could uh, monitor the, um, uh, the temperature in my closet. Because I keep my wine in my closet and I, was, I wasn't sure if it was getting too hot on the hot days. I figured my closet was the coldest place, but uh, after some analysis I found out it was just as hot as the rest of the house. But what was cool was I was able to set it up uh, three temperature uh, sensors to the, the breadboard. Um, I used um, Wi-Fi so I could put it in my closet because I don't have my closet wired for Ethernet yet. Uh, and then um, it was reporting the, uh, the temperature every five minutes. So this was my, um, this was my, my favorite project of the ones I did. Uh, lastly, I'd like to talk about chipsets. Uh, before you run out there and buy a uh, USB uh, Wi-Fi adapter for your Raspberry Pi, um, I would do a lot of research on the chipsets first because not every chipset uh, has a driver that supports everything I've talked about today. So um, AP mode, mesh mode, monitor mode, not every Wi-Fi adapter does that. So um, uh, do a Google search for something like, you know, uh, Wi-Fi adapter that supports AP mode, Raspberry Pi. You know, and, and there's this great uh, resource uh, from the Linux uh, Foundation. If you search for Linux uh, Wi-Fi, they have a, a, a full table on that. And um, if you get in touch with me later, I'd be happy to point out links and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, understanding the chipset, understanding um, the limitations of various Wi-Fi will save you spending money on Amazon of you know, buying Wi-Fi adapters that, um, that don't work. So uh, that's all I have today. Uh, thank you very much for coming out. And uh, I'll be standing over there later if you uh, have any questions. Thank you.